welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. For, we gonna go a little serious. Well, a little, little bit. Um, been watching a lot of different shit on the internet. Um, just chilling, watching different conversations. And um, one thing that's becoming constant that I'm seeing in the in the, 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 con, the the content that I'm absorbing is the conversation about um, the youth and the violence that's going on, and just the um, the subculture of it. You feel me? And um, a conversation that came up that I was privy to that I want to bring to our platform is the difference between being a gangster and being a thug. And if these youngins that's doing these things know the difference, and it may be a different definition, a different dif- different difference to each person. Maybe. Uh, maybe a generalized thing, but I just want to bring that conversation here and just bring, just talk about just the the how can I say it uh, and not a non safe talk so everybody understand what I'm trying to say. Um, no, just bring to the forefront. The, you feel me? Just bring forth to the forefront the conversation of the bullshit and this violence, the, the senseless violence nowadays. Because at one point in time, violence had a sense. Violence is never the answer, but it, it it was a means to a situation where it seems like now it's for no reason and people are, do, are getting in situations or putting themselves in situations to have um, certain clout. It, clout's a big word nowadays, so I'll use that. Um, people are doing things and joining organizations, organizations just for clout and putting themselves in situations that comes with that. Um, but a lot of them are seeking a title of being a gangster or I'm a gangster, I'm a gangster. I don't really think they know what real gangsters are and, and what it means to be a, a actual gangster. Um, even me, a gangster is like a, a, a different level of that shit y'all doing. A gangster is a, a, a level in a criminal enterprise. A gangster is an organization. A gangster is... Um, is, is it, it's just that, you feel me? It ain't just randomness. It's calculated. It, it's calculated. A gangster is more than just that bullshit. If you're looking at gangsters, look at your, your classic gangsters: your, your Al Capones, your um, your your Nicky Barnes on on a black scale. You feel me? Um, but now I think we're dealing with more of the young people who are seeing these thugs who they grew up under and idolized. And thinking that's what a gangster is and aspiring to be that, even though a gangster ain't nothing to, to aspire to be. You feel me? I just don't like the, the the state of the subculture and what our children are going to eventually grow up into. You feel me? Like that, that this bullshit in America, this bullshit worldwide. Because like what I'm saying, it's not just an American thing. It's, it's in Europe. Or it, it's in different sec- different sections in Africa. Just the, this, the subculture of bullshit with these killings in this age group, you feel me? And what y'all think, what y'all think, man? Um, I, I guess on the, I guess to start at the beginning, uh, on the thugs versus gangster thing, I think you definitely just that like gangsters, you have to first of all be in some form of a gang, whether that be organized crime and some um, on the more mob type level whether that be uh on the street level like you know Aryan nation blood scripts you know gd like all of that like i think it depends like that's what makes you a gangster first and foremost like you have to be a gang member that does gang shit and then you're a gangster i think with the thug thing I think that that can be taken two ways because you can look at it in the Tupac way of like, you know what I'm saying? The hurt you gave, you know what I'm saying? Like that type of thing where you you more of on some, like I'm rebelling against the system for a bigger cause to, you know what I'm saying? Fight for oppressed people. Mm-hmm. Or you can look at it as this, the actual textbook definition of a thug, you know what I'm saying? A person that comes to like, 
destroy, steal, ravage, you know, and that's pretty much what a thug would do in that sense. So, like, if a kid is trying to be that, then that's exactly what you're seeing. You're seeing kids that are trying to be thugs. I think the gang element is there because it's cool now to be a gangbanger. So, like, you got people that's, like, never even thought about joining a gang that are now, like, finding and seeking out gangs. Not like you grew up with it or it was, like, a part of your upbringing or it was a part of something that, you know, like, something that was, like, there, like, organically happening. It's like, hmm, all right. I want to get on. I need some attention. Hey, let me go find me some blood scripts. Insert gang here and say I'm gonna go find them and let me go try to be one of them. What do I need to do? I need to pay. I need to. What do I need to do? I just need this clout. So and then I think that if you look at eighty percent of these young people, they're not the ones doing the shit. It's just like the regular population. It's twenty percent of them that are gangsters for real, that are thugs for real, that are really like. I don't care. I'm going mm-hmm. all out every day just because. And then the rest of them are really just a bunch of dudes that get caught up in that shit because basically they they do all the cool thug shit that looks cool to some dummy online. Like, oh, look, look, he going out bad. Look, he going hard. Yeah, they ain't fucking with him because, you know, he doing it. He got that. He got the thing on. He got that Draco. But then when they start shooting, now you got to back up all of that shit that you've been talking these past six months that then got you all this attention online. So I think the online culture of like, it's like back in the day, the dude that did that would be corny. He gets in the way. Now, because of social media and the internet, it's so many people not from that them these kids' hoods that's boosting their head up that don't really know the real them to, like, check them so much. Mm-hmm. And once the kid gets a certain amount of fame, <clears throat> anybody that is checking them is looked at as a hater, or the people mm-hmm. that would normally check them start trying to just go mm-hmm. along with the program because now this person got this little cloud or this attention, so they like, well, let me give me some off of it. So it's like, with the killing, I, th- I think that goes back to, like, it, it all stems from the internet itself. Like the fact that they're on social media, it puts more pressure on situations. Like it's the same situations that we would have, but they're all like exacerbated and trumped up because the kids don't have no off switch no more. It's no like it's nothing to cut that shit off. Like mama would be like, Man, keep your ass in the house. These kids can be in the house and still going along with whatever the narrative is, even in the house. So it's like, it, it's no way to really turn it off. And the internet is so permeating through our culture. Like, it's parents that really believe that they can't not have, their kids can't not have their phone. Yeah. They look at that as a necessity just because of the way they've been socialized. So I, I think it just goes back to, like, the way internet culture is, it makes situations that normally would have been a fight or may not have even got to the point where it got physical because it's not stopping. It's no off switch. It's no, I go home and then we people forget about it or like we don't see each other for a few days and that shit could blow over. It's even when I'm not seeing it, it's a hundred people liking and commenting on this situation. So when you wake up, if you stop moving down, now you upset again. That's my take. It's like, it's like um, you have a potential million person following just for doing stupid shit. And yeah, man. it's like it's the what did you- Paul Mooney used to say? Um, Paul Mooney used to say, "Everybody want to be a nigga till you got to be a nigga." And that's the same thing with this shit. Everybody want. Oh yeah. Everybody wants the perks of looking gangster. Being a street nigga, looking tough. If you guy trying to get all the chicks and all that other stuff, till somebody else that wants that same club test you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> video oh, yeah, the in the back of the head, <clears throat> but not like one video thing is... the hell out of somebody else. <laughs> in, in my mind, um, 
And in my mind, I was always thought, you know, Thug is the random shooter, the random shooter person that's just out there. He he ain't mm. affiliated with nobody. We're not against he's just rap. out there, and he's just he's rap. just acting a monk, being an agent of chaos, do whatever the fuck you want. Sucks. Sucks. <clears throat> Until he actually gets recruited by some gangsters, and then that whole process starts. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing too. Uh, I don't think it's so much the label. Cause like a gang, like the gangsters are wilding, the thugs are wilding, people of all ilks are wilding, trying to do things to get themselves seen. In a world where it's so easy to be seen, people are feeling more unseen than ever. I think that's why you have mental health issues rising in the younger age groups. I think that's why you have like a lot of them struggling with like basic communication skills, like. It's sad, but like there's groups of kids that have genuinely not dealt with anything other than constantly being pressured by the internet, whether that be forced to look a certain way, forced to have a certain shoe, forced to have a certain outfit, forced to be with a certain type of girl, forced to have a certain type of car, forced to have a certain type of lifestyle, forced to like, and not forced by somebody putting a gun in their head, but like more just like mm -hmm. society pressures that like pressure, they grow up with. Pressure. The way they're socialized is like these things are what matters. And if you don't have these things or you're not doing these things, you <laughs> cannot access life. You can't access the good stuff in life. Whereas we grew up looking at it like be treat people with respect, work hard. Um be smart about who you say something to because it may be an immediate consequence for the way you say certain things. Um, learn how to communicate well so that your point gets across because you're going to be talking to people a lot. Like, that's how we grew up. So our set of skills, like, we still got into shit, but their shit turns into a shooting because our shit, we might have been able to just, hey, man, look, I know I ain't going to see you for, for another two weeks. We're going to either fight or we ain't. We're going to either do whatever right now or we ain't. With them, they might see each other three, four times, but the internet build up, be the ramp yeah. up a whole year and a half, and then finally, I snap when I see you. Or finally, when we do fight, I can't handle even taking a loss. So if, if it looks like it's going down where I'm losing, <clears throat> we got to shoot now because now... I, I got to back up all that bravado and I, I can't take that loss because the thought of me going back to the internet and having people look at me as a sucker is worse than the thought of me dying. It's worse than the thought of me going to jail for life. I'd rather be in jail for life with a hit song and look at me or I'd, be, I'd rather be in jail for life and all the niggas in the hood know me and I'm the man as opposed to just Fuck taking all that shit. All niggas like I, I niggas too much. <laughs> I, I never wanted to be the coolest nigga in the crowd because I look back all the cool niggas is doing shit they didn't want to have to do when they got older. He said the coolest niggas in the crowd back then is either dead and gone or trying to recover from their bullshit what they did when they was the coolest niggas. Hey, man. <laughs> be a fucking square. It ain't that bad, man. I, I understand being a youth and your reputation and that's my name and this is my block. But at the end of the day, that's not your block. Nope. And if you want to get deeper, that ain't your name. But that's a different conversation. But don't be out here dying for a block that your mama renting her, her space on. You feel me? Y'all over here dying for blocks y'all claiming that y'all written. Y'all written on. Ain't no ownership. That ain't joke. Because as long as you dead and gone, somebody else gonna come and say the same thing. You live yeah. to see another day. Your life is more important. Ten seconds can lead you to twenty five years of a hard shit. Ten seconds is all it takes. Even less than that to pull a trigger and kill someone. Please. Youth. Old folks, anybody listen, love yourselves more 
than to let a few seconds cause you 25 to life. That's true. Yeah, man. I got a, I got a controversial take on this. Like, all right. Um, do we, I feel like society folk focus too much on the youth. I feel like it's so much of a camera lens on the youth so much or being youthful or just the, the idea of youth so much or whatever that it actually puts extra pressure on the youth or whatever. Like it, it, it's almost like See what I'm not, not to say fuck them kids, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel you, but if we don't focus on the kids, you got to remember the kids, the kids are the future. You feel me? Cause, mm-hmm. So we got to look at it. The generation that's right now growing up kills themselves out. What, what, what is the next generation going to be? You feel me? It, 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 it's self-preservation. It, look at West 100. He's doing this out there. Patty, patty for clout. It's all for the same shit. He just ain't killed mm-hmm. you know what? Mm. So, um, this is like it, this shit. Yeah, was dumb saying, young nigga telling me dumb old niggas. Oh, um, not not to say not focus on them as far as development, but as like everything seems to be focused on youth, even things that shouldn't be focused on youth, like marketing, advertisement, just. Anything that's sold out there, the lifestyle, even the lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Just everything is just focused on this is going to make you youthful or young or whatnot. I'm like, there's not really a focus on, you know, just uh, staying focused, going to course and growing up and being older and achieving things as an older person. Like, there's not really a focus on that. It's like, it's like if it is, it's more like this is the celebrity that has the the big ass house, and he owns this, that, and the third. But like, as far as like the regular everyday person or whatever, that's you know, it's not really a focus on that. Like, that's I, true. Oh, so so like with that, that comes down to like. For one, thinking the way a young person thinks, but then for two, just thinking the way humans think in this day and age of instant gratification. The average person won't even invest in certain types of stock funds. Like you can invest in the S&P 500, let that shit sit for 30 years, and you will make off 10 to 15 times better than any other investments you could be making. But most people won't do that because it don't sound as sexy as investing in Bitcoin and trying to flip it in, you know, a couple of weeks, you make however many thousand dollars. So, like, it's the way we're wired at this point. Like, we're wired to get something quickly. So, like, we'll Uh invest a little bit of time, but not that much time. So, like, the average daily life don't look sexy to the average young person. It don't look sexy to be coming home to the same wife Kind of doing the same. Like, if you think about what the average, real, healthy life is like, it's not boring, but it's boring. Like you, time parenting. If you got kids, if you don't have kids, you're hanging out with your wife. Like, now there's exceptions to the rule where you got people that all they do is travel and all that, but those are exceptions to the rule. The average person making a decent salary, not they rich. Not they balling, but just the average person. Mm-hmm. Decent power. Mm-hmm. If you look at what that healthy lifestyle looks like, it doesn't look <clears throat> exciting. Now, it's going to be way more gratifying because you're going to end up probably ending up able to travel, so you're going to still get to do some cool shit, probably some cooler shit than you would if you was doing the other lifestyle, but it don't sound as fun. It don't sound as yeah. fun and a thug out here ripping and running the streets and, you know, you know, yeah, these girls out here having a hot girl summer, man. You know, we pushing that P. You know what I mean? It, it don't sound as cool as all of these little trendy titles because it's not as cool. Mm-hmm. Grown, sh- grown shit ain't necessarily cool. 
grown shit can be seen as cool, but grown shit ain't done to be cool. Grown shit is done to handle grown shit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, like, it's really just a mentality of, like, there's a lot of adults that are that don't have adult mentality. Now, the teenagers, mm-hmm. they're influenced by them same adults. <clears throat> when mama and daddy don't have a, an adult mentality, where's the child learning it? They're now teaching each other mentality and still learning from those adults that don't have it because they're still learning by osmosis. They're watching it. They're just soaking up those mannerisms and behaviors. So it's like, you know, it is what it is, man. It's just a circle. It's just a bunch of people that should be having more common sense, but it's nobody to really teach that because common sense don't look cool. So when you talk common sense now, you get seen as an old hater. Like it goes back to that conversation we was having about hate. Like True. everything you say that goes against the norm or goes against what everybody is pushing right now because it feels good and it makes you a part of the <coughs> crowd. You're gonna be seen as hating. So when you are speaking sense or when you are talking something like, hey man, I know you think that that gangster lights out of school, but this is what it's gonna lead to. They don't care about that because literally in their minds, it's gotten to the point where, yeah, I hear you on that longevity shit, but I'm about to hit a million followers off this, or I'm gonna get the girl off of this. Or I'm gonna have all the dudes in the hood respect me now off of this, and they gonna they gonna you know what I'm saying know my name, and I'm gonna be the dude everybody's talking about. It's literally simple as that. True. Real life has become True. it's starting to be lived like internet life. The way young people and people in general are starting to just move, operate, behave, and socialize in real world everyday like face to face interactions is becoming and following the same patterns and behaviors of online behavior. It's just, you're not looking at the phone in that moment. But it feels the same. If you talk to a lot of young people, especially that grow up in this new generation, like the conversation feels like you're talking to somebody on social media. It's like real stuff. Yeah. They don't break in and say nothing. It's, it's like, okay, you type first and I type first. And it's real short little bits they hit you with. It's like these little clips of, for sure. Like these little, like they speaking in catchphrases almost. Yeah, yeah. That is true. That's scary. My hope is that it is going around the circle though, and, and shit, gets, <laughs> shit reaches that critical mass of like, it's so fucked up and weird, and shit is so stupid that like the generation after them be like, we ain't gonna do none of that. That's dumb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like each generation kind of rebels against the, 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 like, each group of generations kind of rebels against the group before them. So I feel like a lot of us on the back to college movement, let's get your education, let's work real hard, let's chase the quote unquote American dream, let's, you know what I'm saying, do all of that. Like, I feel like a lot of our generation under us kind of rebelled against that. So we're seeing a lot of this, like, I don't care about the future. You, it started with the YOLO. That that was like the the turning point of like, okay, we are now at a point where like that's the that's the mantra, and it never really yeah. stopped. They just stopped using that term, but the general lifestyle Different of like phrase. party rocking in the high. it just uh, let's turn up, let's take pills, let's get fucked up all day. Let's numb ourselves to real world problems. Anything going on for real, let's numb it away with some drink and some syrup or some pills or something else. And let's just party. And if it's not a turn up, then it ain't fun. And Mm -hmm. everything has to be posted because we got to make sure that we were seen doing the thing. So we don't even really care about actually doing the thing. We just need a picture showing that we were doing the thing. So we don't have to actually ever bowl. We just have to be at the bowling alley holding the bowling ball, doing a pose, and then we're done. Social media is literally the promoter with a few people at the club taking a picture and making it seem like it's a lot of people at the club. And they don't turn off. The kids don't turn it off. Like, the kids are addicted to it. So, like, it's so ingrained into their everyday life. They're afraid. It's a a mental fear, like a withdrawal thing physically for them to like let go of those devices. Unless you have a child that you are already teaching to 
be normalized and not be relying on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's not damn, the damn we're not know what you mean. Cause my goddamn kids already know that damn cell phone. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. My oldest man. Fuck that. I make sure there ain't no internet. No way, you see, I got some internet. You go, you have even more because I'm gonna make sure I turn in and off. You, 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 you with your phone on, click? Nope. You can play games. That's about all you can do. That's about all you can do around me is play games on your phone. Make sure you know that shit ain't that important. This is a tool. You know I mean? Go on side. Go. On. You got a big ass front yard in the backyard. Go on. Y'all, all y'all go on. Take your ass to somewhere. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the luxury of having these screens blowing up. It's a luxury, oh, but people nowadays see it as a necessity. The lights come on. If you come back <laughs> in, in, so you better not have no fun out there and need to come in to get water or pee or nothing. You better do everything out there because you come in here, you are done. Ain't no in and out of my house. These motherfucking, these motherfucking tablets and phones is not a necessity for these kids. It's a luxury. You know why it's not a necessity because. Most motherfuckers, I, I don't think I know nobody with a cell phone. From my age, when I was a young kid, even now it's kids six, seven years old walking around with iPhones and shit. What the hell do you need to do? Just in case of an emergency. What's the emergency? You going to school and then your people just picking you up. And they got phones at the school. Mm-hmm. They can call your parent if it's an emergency. It, 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 it. What you get your phone in the class for? See, and then that leads to other problems. Now your kids are distracted in their class because they can't stop being on their phone. Oh, no, no, no. But, but Johnny needs his phone. And Johnny needs his phone in class just in case he has an emergency. Because Johnny may not be feeling good. That's what the teacher there for. There's always a piece of technology that some generation is addicted to. Now it's our phones. Um, after yeah. it, it was like laptops. I mean, Before like, that, it was TVs. I wonder if people were addicted to radio. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, they were. There were, there were people that yeah. were sitting out all day and just listen to the different shows and shit. And if they miss, oh, oh. Okay. yeah, because I remember the movies where they'd be like, "Oh, we got to make it there to the house on time at by six o'clock." Because blah blah blah, DJ whatever show come on or whatever. I see on those old sixty shows. Wolf it's game always there. something. Once people had a normal, but see, that's the thing though. Even with radio, the addiction never got that bad because things used to turn off. The internet, social media, that doesn't no. off. Like, as long as you have a connection somewhere, you can keep on going. You can scroll and scroll or watch and watch or type and type and never stop if you don't really want to. There's no. Like, uh, yeah, I remember when the TV used to turn on. Yeah, I remember when the TV stations used to turn this go off. Exactly, exactly. The damn national anthem. Or you can snatch one of the songs, the rainbow bars in the boot, or it was stacked. Yep. Yeah, but you didn't get right. nothing else. Whatever else you thought you was gonna watch, that shit was done. Fuck you. It's midnight. Go to sleep. Unless it was the weekend, they take that shit to like maybe four. They need to bring that shit back. They let you get like a Saturday Night Live and then a movie after Saturday Night Live or some uh, Twilight. They need to bring that shit back, man. They should bring it back. It'll make my job a lot easier. I don't have a whole bunch of people calling in. Until the cycle completely shuts down to the point where like everything resets. Where like this whole civilization crashes. Because so much is invested in everything. Everything is ingrained mm-hmm. in everybody's daily life. There's some people who can't even without the internet right now at this very moment. There are some people that if the internet shut down for three weeks, they can't access none of their bread. So when you have shit like that, it's like then you have how do you shut down certain things? You shut down social media within you're going to have them arguing, well, we're just as vital to everyday life as a bank. And then you're going to have the banks arguing about that. And then you're going to have this group arguing. you have that group arguing. They're going to spend so much time arguing and shit's still going to be going on. And we're still going to be more and more ingrained. So it's just, you know, it, it's one of the things we got to learn to live with it. But I think doing stuff like what we're doing now, like when you have kids, 
teaching your kids how to do both, like teaching them how to be proficient in the skills of technology because they're going to need those heavily, but also teaching them how to be reliant on not having those things so they can function without it. So if the internet does go down, they're not mentally affected. If they turn their phone in at school, at the beginning of the day, it doesn't send them on a weird rampage the rest of the day because they can't type and TikTok or do it up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Sound like a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of stuff that people going to call on my phone at work about to complain about. So I really don't care. You're going to trouble you. Told y'all. When I get rich, I'm getting my island. And it's gonna be me, just me, me and my giant robot. Nobody else. Population one, Uno. Uno, Uno will be two, man. Be two. You and your giant robot. Would would the giant robot be a citizen? No, no. Because in, oh, in, in in San Juan, Puerto Rico, we don't <laughs> we don't believe in artificial intelligence. 